We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be seeing only in textbooks and TV. Today, we're leaving our beachside rooms in Donsol, where we tried unsuccessfully to swim with the local whale sharks. We're flying to the island of Shargao, but our first of two flights is already delayed by an hour, putting our connection in Manila at risk. Will we make it to the laid-back surf destination this afternoon, or will we have to come up with an exciting plan B? Let's get to it. We left Alicia Beach Resort and we're headed to Shargao, but there is a problem. I just got an email from the airline and they are delaying our flight an hour. And that's kind of a big problem because our connection in Manila was only an hour. So until we get to the airport and talk to somebody, we have no idea if we're missing our flight completely or if they're gonna hold the plane or if we have to stay the night in Manila. I don't know. Not everybody seems as concerned as we are. Let's see what's gonna happen with this flight. All they want when we go to the airport is Kinder eggs. Every single time. I don't know. So um, the, the next flight will be tomorrow. 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 So our conundrum is this. We have to decide right now what we want to do about the second flight, the connection from Manila to Shargao. It looks like our luggage will go all the way to Shargao even if we end up having to stay in Manila. And that's not a great option because we won't have toothbrushes or clothes or anything like that. They said that they could tag our stuff, our luggage, just to go to Manila. The problem there is we already have a super tight turnaround, like 10 minutes, to get to our next flight. If we then have to go get baggage from the baggage carousel, go out, go back through security, recheck those bags, there's no way we're gonna make it to our flight unless that flight is delayed. We're getting a printed certificate that the flight changed, making us miss our flight. And we are gonna submit a claim to our travel insurance company. And so we'll be reimbursed for any inconvenience this has. If you wanna learn more about the travel insurance we use, go to followabc.com slash travel insurance. Now the challenge is gonna be how we make the best of this. Okay, so since we know we are actually staying in Manila for the night, we just have to figure out what we could possibly do to pass the time. Who could we hang out with? Guys, we have some bad news and some good news. What is our bad news? Bad news is that we are missing our connecting flight to Shargao tonight, which means we're staying the night in Manila and we're gonna hang out with mom duty. <laughs> We can't wait to see you. Have dinner with mom too. It's funny how things work out. I never expected our second collab with them to be so soon. This is like two days later. But there are still some other parts that we have to fit together. We have our resort in Shargao that we're missing a night on. And we're missing a full day in Shargao that we had all these activities planned for. So we're gonna have to rearrange and wrap our heads around that. So I've gotta get on email with the resort and the tour company that we were going through. So it's gonna be a busy afternoon of sorting some things out. Oh, I'm so sorry. Aaron's gonna get some work done while we're on the plane, do some editing. We've been trying to get this short video up on YouTube for the past couple of days, but since we haven't had any real internet for a couple of days, it's been nearly impossible. So that's one nice thing about being in Manila for the night, we'll be able to get our uploads done. We're on final approach into Manila, and I just realized we still don't know where we're gonna stay tonight. We wanna try someplace different than the other two times we stayed in Manila. We've had some really good luck in the Philippines with the Shangri-La brand, so there's one that's right in the heart of BGC. It's called The Fort, and it's right off of High Street. So I think we're gonna give that a try, but we're just gonna show up and see what kind of a rate and room we can get. Just grabbed our cab. It's about 20 minutes to get from the airport to BGC where we're staying. Hopefully, if they have a room. We're here. They do have a room for us. They actually have two rooms for us. We're gonna get connecting rooms because our travel insurance covers all four of us, which means we have a little extra budget for our room tonight. <laughs> our rooms are great. Connecting, of course, and we've got the king and the kids have two queen beds in there. Are they doubles or beds? Twins. They're twins, they're twin beds. <laughs> So the kids have twin beds. See, we've destroyed the rooms already because we've all taken showers and uh, I haven't even seen their room yet. We're in a rush because we want to go see our friends. 
but we've always really liked staying at the Shangri-Las, that's why we chose it. And we've stayed at them before in Boracay and Cebu. What is with them? <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to give it a try in Manila. All right, you guys ready to go see our friends? Let's hit the road, go. <laughs> Start off by checking out Samba that's in our hotel. That might be the easiest plan because it's actually Chinese New Year today. So everybody's celebrating, some of the streets are blocked off, they're having parades, and a lot of the restaurants are booked or closed. It's only 4.37 right now, most things don't open until 5, but I think we're gonna find a seat outside on the pool patio where the bar is open, at least start with a couple of cocktails. Finally, Phil's got some drinking buddies. Sometimes I drink, not all the time. <laughs> you missed our whole dinner and our drinks because the Shangri-La does not allow videoing. Don't tell them we're doing it on our way out. But we're moving on to the next spot and uh, we have a lot to catch up on. Here's the plan. We are going to explore Manila by restaurant hopping a bit. So number one down, that's where we're staying and now we're going out and about. We've been talking all week about how Chinese New Year is coming up but now it's officially Chinese New Year, like literally today. Last night was the eve. So a lot of the streets here are closed down and they're having the big festivities. That also means it's pretty hard to get into a lot of the places around here. So we're not even sure where we're gonna be able to get some cocktails. We're just gonna go with the flow, roll with the punches. We are making a little stop just for the kids. They have been promised some boba tea. I don't think Colt or Brooklyn have ever had boba tea. We're going to Yifeng. Can I have extra brown sugar pearls, please? I know what to do, I know what to do. You know what to do? Okay, no, shake it. Just shake it, baby. Shake it until it's cold. And then you're just gonna poke a hole like this. You never tried boba? He said he tried boba before. What flavor did you get? Winter? Winter melon. Winter melon, y'all. I hate how it keeps getting balls. What is, do they taste good or something? So they're tapioca pearls, which are basically, uh, they're made out of tapioca starch. It's warm, that's why it's warm, and then they put it cold. Are you supposed to, like, eat them? Yeah, yeah you chew them. They're called tapioca pearls, bubbles, <laughs> pearls. A lot of people call them, like, pearls. I, I call them pearls. Me and Nia might do the Wednesday dance. Talent, right there. We're gonna try and see if we can get into Sita BGC. Really cool rooftop bar, but it's a crowded night. And they're gonna be fireworks tonight, so rooftop bar is gonna be perfect for it. But only if we can get up there in the next 20 minutes. We made it up here just in time for the fireworks and there's no better view. I didn't realize we would literally be right in front of them going off. Happy Chinese New Year, guys. Kung Hei Fat Choi. <laughs> that means Happy New Year in Chinese. Nelvin Sweet talked his way into this big private room over here, so we're going in there for the rest of the night. There's a dining room and a living room. This is an amazing little spread for us to hang out in for the night. Happy New Year again. Since this was a fortunate accident for us and we made the best out of what could have been a really frustrating situation, we want to know what Mom Duty's most difficult travel day was. Oh yeah, four days? but that wasn't Was difficult. that from Vietnam? That was three days. It just took us a really long time to get from one place to another and with kids, yeah. it's very difficult. Oh, yeah. Backward. Yeah. <laughs> New question for Mom Duty. What advice would you give to people who feel like traveling with kids is too hard? Oh man, well you it's not hard. <laughs> well first of all, there, uh, when it comes to a family, it's not just about the kids, it's also about the parents. Mm -hmm. And a big part of the parents' lives is looking through their eyes, right? Mm -hmm. For us, when the parents are happy, right, there's a happy family. When you found out that you're gonna be traveling the way you're doing right now, how did you feel? 
I was excited beyond belief. Like I felt so antsy to get out of, you know, our whatever routine we were in that I couldn't wait to go and do something different and get out of our comfort zone. Scotch, scotch, scotch. We honestly have not partied like this. They finished this, not Rosia and I, the boys. They finished this. We have not partied this hard or this late in such a long time. It is past midnight now, oh my gosh. And now, guess what? We have a flight tomorrow that we can't miss. So I guess we won't see them for a very long time. <laughs> Until we miss another flight. No, <laughs> oh, that's right. We're gonna see them in like a couple of hours. We're having brunch together too. So they are taking us to a favorite brunch spot in Manila. BGC is an extremely new area of town, like literally didn't even begin planning stages until the mid 90s. So most of the stuff that you see around here was built in the 2000s. And just like our friends, it's a great hub for travelers and a lot of expats want to come and live here because they have a really great internet infrastructure and a lot of golf courses, so there's recreation and a quite a number of museums, just like the Mind Museum that we visited a few days ago. Two of the top universities in the country are right here. And this specific area is called Bonificio Global City, and that is named after Bonificio Fort, which was the Filipino National Army Base. And it's really close to the Manila Airport. A major hub, it's the biggest airport in the Philippines, so you can pretty much get to anywhere. Any nearby Southeast Asia country, and of course, anywhere in the Philippines, Manila is gonna be your connection. And we're just walking into Tipsy Pig to meet up with our friends for a farewell breakfast. For real this time. Good, Good morning. morning. And the party continues. How you doing, man? Good, Good morning. <laughs> long, long, long time no see. So Tipsy Pig is actually like their favorite place here for breakfast. I'm getting a classic Filipino breakfast, the Tipsy Tapa. I've seen Tapa all over the place and I have not gotten it yet. Funny story, I took Phil's breakfast. This is not tapas at all. <laughs> this is beef tapas. We're gonna have our breakfast and we are gonna catch up as much as we can before we head to the airport and Fingers crossed we get our next flight. Or maybe not. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Stay tuned. Well, it's time to say goodbye and I don't think this is going to be easy. I am crying. I'm crying because I feel like we've all found something really special in, in our new friends, but I think especially Brooklyn and Mia. <laughs> And I'm just so happy. No, this is definitely not the last goodbye. Love you guys, okay? We you love guys, you too. Yeah. That goodbye was so hard. But now it's time for trying to get to Shargao, take two. It's such a shame to leave this beautiful weather. It has been perfect here in Manila. Security tells us that we are at the wrong terminal for Philippine Airlines domestic. We're in Terminal 3, which is where our hotel bellhop and taxi driver took us. But now we're coming way down here to see if that's correct. It looks like we might have to take a taxi over to Terminal 2. Comedy of errors. It is a 15 minute taxi ride from Terminal 3, where we were dropped off at, to Terminal 2, where we need to be. And we're cutting it really close now. And I wasn't actually nervous about us missing our flight before, but now I am. Same flight today. Oh my God. We're still at the wrong area. This airport is a little broken up. Uh, there are a lot of different possibilities that you can fly out of and check into. And I'm hoping this is the last one. It's gotta be where we're supposed to be. <laughs> Series of events. It's just after 12 and our flight is at 1.30, so that gives us 90 minutes to get checked in. It's the tiny domestic side, so it's not gonna be a problem. We made it. But we don't have our boarding passes yet. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. This is unbelievable. And I feel like I'm getting close to the breaking point, but they said that our flight had taken off already. And I don't understand how that can be. Yesterday they told us it was the exact same flight and it was at 1.30. So now they're saying that we do have that flight at 1.30, but we aren't on it. That they booked us after the whole fiasco yesterday for an 8.30 a.m. flight today, instead of putting us on the 1.30 like they said they were. 
hopefully they can get us on that 130 flight. Hopefully there's room. I needed a minute. Sometimes things can get very stressful and I was starting to give in to the stress, but you can't do that. You have got to be persistent with your good attitude and keep going because it's gonna work out the way it's supposed to. I truly believe that it's gonna work out the way it's meant to be, just how it has so far. So we're keeping the faith. Okay, but are we on the flight? We're just boarding with that. So Doraga, we have to wait in here. She came back to give us our passports back and uh, she just told us to take a seat and wait. We have an hour till our flight. She says that they have to coordinate with the Daraga uh, checking counter to see what the issue is and to, I, I don't know if they're trying to get us on this new flight or not. Really, it wasn't clear. Okay. okay. This will be best time. Okay. Thank you for finding a solution. So the solution is they're going to send us to Cebu to connect to go to Shargao. Uh, I know that Cebu is about an hour and a half flight and it's probably a really quick jump over to Shargao from there. So it's, it's not a terrible solution. Of course, there's still a lot of risk here because now we're talking about two flights instead of one. So if this flight happens to be late or have any issues, we could miss the connecting flight. We could have a cancellation on the Cebu side. I, in our experience, when you're dealing with Philippine Airlines and multiple flights, there's a lot of risk. So fingers crossed, we're gonna hope for the best, but we are not out of the woods yet. You gotta hurry, come on. The flight they're putting on leaves in eight minutes, so we're just trying to get our bags on the plane. I'm not gonna put them on film, but I think there are like five employees from Philippine Airlines working on this right here. Yeah, mistakes happen, absolutely, but it's really great when there are people who try to help you out and try to help fix the problem. Let's have a hand for the kids, right? For going through this two days in a row. I mean, I know they love seeing their friends, but seriously, to <laughs> they are troopers. They are true road warriors with us, and we are so grateful. So grateful. We're getting to personal escort through security along with our luggage because the flight's literally supposed to leave like one minute ago. So now we're just headed to Cebu, but they couldn't check our bags all the way through. We have to pick up our bags when we connect, and we also have to get our boarding pass for the connection. So, my gosh, this has been one thing after another. And we're here in Cebu. So far, it's going our way now. We got about a 45 minute layover here, so we just have to pick up our bags, go get our tickets, go through security, rinse and repeat. That was easy enough. Boarding is in 11 minutes. <laughs> we are on the home stretch. Man, this has been so rewarding and challenging at the same time, but it just goes to show that life is gonna point you in the right direction, and when it's challenging, just hang in there. It's worth it. You will get through it when you have a difficult travel day. Take it from us. The huge silver lining to this entire experience is that we got to spend even more time with our new best friends, and we were just talking last night about how we've been really focused on the importance of Brooklyn and Colt being able to find these new friends and be able to share similar experiences and how that was something that's kind of missing from some of our travels, but we've realized that it's really the same thing for Aaron and for me. At the end of the day, there was a little bit of a void for us also. And being able to connect with Nelvin and Rocio has been transformative for us. And we could not be more grateful to have made those new friends and we couldn't be more grateful to have gotten to spend some extra time with them. We still got a lot of journeying on this trip alone coming up, so subscribe and follow us along. We're finally gonna hit Shargao. We are the Lockwoods, Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience, up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn, and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people. Blah, 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 blah. Or, 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 I don't know what I'm saying. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you're going to have to cut that, but go ahead. Want to give me a transition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because I fear for A, B, or C. What? Is not always be changing. You can cut that. <laughs> 
So I think it's actually very safe to travel. I think it's safer to travel with our kids around the world than honestly it is where we live. I'm sorry, I'm drinking a lot of no, water. No, no, that, that's a great city to another city. <laughs> Are your elbows tired or? <laughs> this is going down now. <laughs> I need a new battery. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> My battery's dead. It's dying, you guys. <laughs> Seriously? It is dying. A, a, a simple jump, right? I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Because you're laughing. You're, the camera is moving. And you're laughing your yeah. butts off back there. <laughs> 